Hey y'all. We're getting started in a sec. Come on in, come on in. what is good y'all how are you this evening welcome 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 in hey tiffany i saw tiffany official deeks uh adriana what's up katie what's up how's everybody doing tonight i am really excited to talk about this episode actually hey time how are you um I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so oily too. Y'all, I did skincare before I hopped on here. I don't have any makeup on, but I do have like my night oils and whatnot. And these lights are bright. But y'all gonna have to y'all gonna have to take it because I'm planning to go to bed right after talking about <laughs> this episode. <laughs> so excuse me being so oily and crazy. I am giving a little bit of time for people to pop in here. So that we can chop it up about this episode. Um, how do y'all feel about episode four? The night game. I want to know. Hey, Shari. How are you? Welcome in. Drop what y'all think about the episode as we wait. Yes. Mimi, you made it. Um, let's see. More people are coming in. 
Calvin got his ass whooped again. <laughs> Um, at this point, I don't know what Calvin got going on, but I think that he needs to take some time to himself because he's, he's doing a lot. He's doing a whole hell of a lot. I'm so excited y'all made it for the live. I know it's a little late. It's a little late for me. I literally went hiking this morning and I also played tennis. That's why I was like, I just can't. I cannot do makeup tonight. I just want to be able to end my day. But I can't without talking to y'all about the show. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it as more people start to trickle in. Um, tonight's episode, if I was to rate it, I would probably give it a solid 8. Because while a lot of things did not happen, I do feel like they gave us a good amount of things to see and reference the character development and I kind of feel like some of the characters are moving along like we might be moving at a snail's pace but we moving time said macho man Calvin <laughs> yeah. Karen went to the basketball court to see Aaron but once she saw Zach she got her feelings hmm. did okay let's all right let's start up at the top Fuego was a speedy Gonzalez he was speedy to get to where he had to get to, but it seemed like they had, you know, extended amount of time in between the sheets. It's the tore up house for me. Uh, <laughs> but um, let's start at the top. Let's start at the top of the episode. We pick up with Calvin and Sabrina at this restaurant, and Calvin is talking about, you did not, um, you ain't stand up for me. You let him disrespect me. And I was just sitting there like, but who was the man in this relationship? Like, are you supposed to defend my honor or am I supposed I mean, mind you, I am about that life. I would definitely, like, if somebody's coming at my man a little bit too sideways, crisscross, whatever, we are a team. Pow, 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 us, like, together, I got you. But not if you're going to go and provoke a situation. And to me, I feel like Calvin provoked that. Bio apologized three whole times, but you are already in your toxic masculinity bag, sir, and you just didn't want to go back. So then you decided to like keep the lie alive and you was going to die on that lie. And it's like, sir, that's your problem. That's not her problem. And him even putting her in the position to, or questioning her in this way of like, why didn't you stand up for me? I'm just like, this to me gave me more of that energy that he had when I felt like he was reverse shaming her after he told her all of the stuff that him and Peggy be doing and how she was just like, wow. He was like, see, I knew you was going to be this way. I knew you was going to think this. And I was just like, can she damn process? Can she just be? Like, I feel like Calvin moves with like this very weird energy of like now having the, you know, he does have the history of Sabrina not necessarily, you know, understanding or being as graceful with the information that she gets and she does jump to conclusions and she does make certain assumptions but like because he has that information now I feel like he's moving in their relationship like he's gonna beat her to the punch basically and he expects less of her and I don't like that like I'm just like at some point you're gonna have to be honest and accountable to the fact that you live an alternative like, like lifestyle and it's not bad or good it's just something that this particular woman has to get used to it's this particular woman has to learn like as you enter into a relationship with somebody you get to know each other and some of the things you ain't gonna be cool with off the bat but it takes some process and time to figure it out and calvin to me is not giving her any of that and then now he's jumping to conclusions and expecting all of this stuff expecting her to go to bat for him because he wanted to jump and jump bad and fight when you can't fight don't try to fight when you can't fight whether you my man or my homie if me and my homegirls is out and you the homegirl that can't fight don't start no shit don't have me out here beating people's ass and you can't even fight please don't do it that's just the rule i don't know about y'all but that's just the rule let me see what y'all saying <laughs> Um, let me switch it so that y'all can see what each other is saying. Macho Man Calvin. Exactly. Like, what do you, what did he want her to do? What the hell did he want her to do? Like, what was she supposed to say? Like, you jumped up like, 
you were disrespectful, bro. You owe me an apology after he had already gave you two apologies. Then he followed up with, I apologize. Nah, you don't do that. What, like, what else was she supposed to even do? It would be a different story if he hadn't even apologized. She could have said, like, okay, yeah, it was a little bit rude. You got, you read, misread the situation. This is whoever, whoever. But he did everything that you were asking for. Like, there was literally nothing that she could do after that. Um... She needs to leave him alone, period. Exactly. <laughs> At this point, like, I've been saying this for a while. I don't think that Sabrina and Calvin are sexually compatible. I don't think they are aligned in reference to life. I feel like Calvin feels like he has to change himself too much to be with Sabrina. And I feel like Sabrina feels like she has to adjust her thoughts too much to be with Calvin. And it's one thing to get with someone who pushes you to be better or pushes you to evolve or pushes you to see the world differently and it's a way that you want to go. And it's another when you feel like you have to completely abandon some of the things that make you you just to be with somebody. If you got to do that, it's a no for me. But if this person is going to actually make you better by pushing you to see things differently or have a different perspective, then go for it. But this is not the case. So what exactly are we doing? We need to go ahead and just let it be let it be done, honestly. So yeah, I agree with y'all. Calvin and Sabrina, they gonna have to go. <laughs> they gonna have to cut it out. And clearly Bio is ready to, you know, hop himself in the ring and throw his hat in there because he wants to do whatever he wants to do with Sabrina. Chill. I don't know how I'm feeling about Bio though too. Like one thing that I do want to say y'all is I'm, I, it's not lost on me. Sorry, my nose is running. It's not lost on me how many men Tyler Perry has on this show vying for the affections of black women, even when it's complicated. So, like, I don't know if it just hit me this episode or I'm just now figuring out, like, articulating it. But even with all the mess, I'm enjoying watching these black women. Like, I'm enjoying watching Robin still pine after Andy, knowing that she got... She got this drama with Gary. I'm enjoying Aaron still standing by with Karen while she's like befuddled because that's what I'm gonna call it until I get to it. Um, when it comes to Zach and his pregnancy, I'm enjoying El Fuego kind of like keep coming back to Danny even though he shouldn't. And this is probably just my little a little tinge of toxicity y'all because I don't feel like we get to see that enough in media I don't and Gary is trash so we could probably go ahead and drop Gary but I think I'm enjoying the parts of it of like watching these men pine after these black women it's it's good to see in my opinion uh, <laughs> she tried to defuse it but Calvin got mad when she tries to apologize for them bye exactly Bio is more Sabrina Speed. What about Bio makes him more Sabrina Speed? Like, he's definitely, you know, um, confident and very direct. So, okay, that's cute. That's given. But he also felt like, one, he wasn't reading the room after Calvin left, and he was just so persistent. So, I don't know about y'all, but it's like a thin line for me. Like, I want you to apply pressure, but I also don't want you to apply too much pressure. And it's somewhere in this, like, nice little medium. And I don't know if their scene ran too long or what, but after a while, I was just like, all right, sir, you should have already been gone. Like, this is now getting very weird. He, you know, tells her he owns the restaurant. He offers to take her home. Sir, in what the hell world do you think that I'm going to let you take me home so that you know where I live after you just beat up this boy that I've been dating and y'all have lost y'all's mind together? What, in what world? Like, do y'all, do men understand how creepy they sound? I, I, I just, no, you're not taking me home. What the hell's wrong with you? Okay, so moving past <laughs> Sabrina and Calvin and Bio, but we know Bio is going to happen. Like, I did a, you know, the 20 characters breakdown, y'all. If you haven't seen it already, if you're new here, go check it out. Bio is a character as well as his little friend Johnny, I think. Um, and Bio is apparently going to be this African prince who is really pursuing Sabrina, so he ain't going nowhere. Um, even though she turned him down in this episode, he's going to be around for quite a bit. Um... I wonder what the official break 
with Calvin and Sabrina is going to be because also um, part of their story, I think, is like Calvin is going to see Sabrina out with, with Vio and that's going to be a little bit weird. Jacoby was the same way. <sighs> Jacoby was the same way, but Jacoby creeped me out. Like, Jacoby just... Uh, he just felt too pressed. Like, way, way too pressed. I don't know what it was about Jacoby that I just was uncomfortable with from the jump. So when she wound up sleeping with him, I was just like, girl, this is this clearly is going to be trouble. But all right, whatever you say. Whatever you say, honey. Um, but let's go into... Where do we want to go next, y'all? I'm going to save Karen for a little bit later. Because y'all be trying to come for me about Karen. And I am riding for, for Mama. I think uh, I really enjoyed her in this episode. With her little confused behind. Uh, she was going to go down the road of trying to tell... Um, she was going to try to tell Aaron... And then she got a little bit confuddled, confused, and all of that jazz. Uh, we get to see, you know, Danny in this episode with Alfago. I was right. Surprise, surprise. I was actually right about Danny and who she's pulling the knife on. But that's not until the end of the episode. All right. So let's go to Danny, actually. Before we get to Andy and her mess, and before we get to Aaron and Karen, and a little team a moment. Let's talk about Danny. How do y'all feel about Danny and El Fuego? Like, what is happening with Danny and El Fuego? While y'all drop in the chat how y'all are feeling about it, I'm going to talk. <sighs> okay. So y'all know I think that Danny's confused. I think that she's projecting. I think that she's running away from certain things. I think that she's struggling with commitment. And she's definitely self-sabotaging. But there were parts of her scene with El Fuego that I completely understood. Like, she, <laughs> when she was like, okay, take your clothes off. Not that, I not that I would do this, but I understood it in that she got uncomfortable with how quickly he was able to like snap into that because it took her to a place of like, oh, you literally do this for other women. So I think that now I'm starting to understand what Tyler Perry is trying to do with Danny as a character, um, specifically with El Fuego, because I have no idea what he's trying to do with the Preston thing. But with El Fuego, I think that with her not being comfortable with him being a stripper, it's really hard to really believe the things that he say if it also feels like this is like riding a bike for you, right? Like, so he's been like, oh yeah, I really want to talk to you. I've been really wanting to like kick it with you. I want to do this. I want to do that. However, every move that you do also feels like you've practiced it. It kind of feels like, well, this ain't for me. This is for anybody who got a dollar. It just so happened that you're not charging me. So that's kind of what I felt like watching the um, the scene with El Fuego and Danny. I really saw it this moment. I didn't really see it before, but I saw it with this moment. Because when she said, take your clothes off, and then he instantly did it. And then she was just like, yeah, it's all of this. I was like, oh, okay, girl, you're literally imagining how many times he does this a day, how many times he does this a week, how many times he does it a month. And that makes sense. Like, I think I kind of would go there too, knowing that he's a stripper. So I'm like, yo, El Fuego, at what point are you going to switch it up? Like, what makes Danny special? What do you really like about her? Why have you been pining after her for all of these years after college? Like, you're going to have to show us something more than you swinging that thing around. Like give us something like apply some other kind of pressure like the sexual pressure is not going to do it because you give that out every night and maybe not on mondays i don't know but like it's not going to work so what do y'all think about danny and El Fuego? um danny needs to know that stripping is his job which is something clearly she can't handle save sister 1965 thank you for your comment if you're new here welcome um but he doesn't. All the Queen's men show that. Wait. Show what, Mimi? Everyone on the book was saying 
that she was pulling the knife out, knife out on El Fuego, and I was like, nah, it can't be him. It could not have been him. Like, that would have escalated way too quickly. Like, I knew it wasn't El Fuego, and I knew it wasn't Preston, because whether she said that she don't feel safe with Preston or not, she feels safe with both of those Negroes. Well, clearly Preston is not. But she feels safe with them enough to tell them about themselves, to do whatever. So I knew that she was not going to go down the road of trying to pull a knife on either one of them. No. Um, Danny needs to be herself until she figures, oh, be by herself until she figures out what she wants. I feel like she is using him because of seeing Preston with that girl. Oh, yeah, for sure. She's definitely using him for, um, after seeing him with the girl at the salon. Because we saw her call him right after. And I totally get that. Like, she's definitely using him. However, if I was to stay in the moment of the scene... I get it. Like, watching him just take his clothes off all quick, it's just like, how many times you did that to so-and-so? I don't know. But I'm also a type of person where I really can't be intimate with somebody who I don't love. So I also wouldn't be doing this, like, little tryst or, like, one-night stand type of thing anyway. But I could totally see how she would be like, yo, you just did that way too quickly. It was no nothing to it. Danny needs to stop wasting that king's time and just apologize to Preston. Also, I think she pulled the knife on Logan from the uh, airport. Yep. Thank you, Christopher Brown. He doesn't sleep around. Midnight call him a square, but Danny shouldn't call him over for booty calls, and maybe we can find out. Yeah, so honestly, I think it's both of them. Danny is definitely using him. However, I think if El Fuego wants to prove that he wants to date Danny or wants to be with her, then he needs to show her something more than the sexual stuff. Because that's all we really been getting. Like, he's like, come to the club. He ain't saying, yo, let's go get coffee. He, you know, like, after the club, he wants to go back and he's not taking no further answer. But he's not like, I'm going to sit on, the, I'm going to sleep on the couch and like, we'll have breakfast in the morning. Like, you also got to do something else, sir, if you actually trying to present something else. I think... That while she shouldn't be judging him for his job and she knows like this is what he does. And yes, we know from all the Queen's men that he don't just be out here doing what the rest of them Negroes be doing. But she don't know that, right? Like they barely even talk. Like when we even think about how they interact, they don't say much to each other. It's all like physical whatever or like random banter back and forth. So... They don't talk. They don't do anything meaningful. And they both need to, to figure it out. El Fuego, if you're going to be around and you're wanting to win her over, then I think that he needs to do more. And Danny, I do think, needs to not be leaning into using him for sex. However, I think also what Tyler Perry is trying to do with Danny as a character is lean into her loneliness. And with that, if I'm looking at it from that lens and trying to give her that kind of grace... Then I see. I can see why she's calling him. I can see why she's doing the things that she's doing. I think, which I, well, actually, I hope. I hope that we're about to see a character arc with her where we can really explore the inner workings of a black woman within her confidence um, as it spans multiple points in her life. Like, we just got the little tidbit today in the today's episode of, like, Oh, I hope I get this promotion when she was talking to Danny. We never heard her talk about wanting to advance at work. Um, we already know how she feels like within her friend group and like what they look at her as. We see how she's interacting with Preston. She's been pushing him away. And now that he has somebody else, she's creating this whole narrative in her head, uh, uh, probably in her head about like how, you know, he might see her, which is totally not the case. And, it's to and he's responding completely because of her actions, but she's not quantifying that. So I would actually love to see if he's going to do this. Like he's had her smoking weed and he had her being all promiscuous and trying to use one night stands and all this other kind of stuff. Like let's get to the, like land the plane, Tyler Perry. Why is she doing it? Like let's talk about the fact that she feels lonely and she doesn't feel confident or she might not know what she really wants to do with her life. Maybe she didn't want to be a flight attendant. Like let's get somewhere meaningful because she's doing all of these things and I don't really understand where we're going with it. Does that make sense? I've been going so meta, so y'all bear with me. But that's kind of where I'm at with Danny. I, this, watching this episode, definitely made me give her more grace, which I'm actually, like, excited for. <laughs> because I was on her head before. I was really, really on her head. Um, let me see. All right, from, from Danny, let's go ahead and talk about Andy. <laughs> Andy, 
our Andy. Oh, wait. Y'all have a couple comments before I go off of that. Um, they need to need need to leave the one nighter alone and get back with rodeo. I would love for them to just go out, walk, and talk about them or whatever. Yes, I would love that too. He wanted to go on a date at the airport. Okay, yes, he has said those things, but I don't feel like El Fuego has actually done those things. He ain't never showed up at her house with flowers. He ain't like. Do something to set yourself apart. If you know you're coming to this airport so that you can go ahead to Miami and do what you do, um, and you want her to take you seriously, show up at the damn airport with flowers. Like, do something, sir. That's just not my pretty face, this damn smile on this body. Here you go. Like, everybody can kind of get that. <laughs> um... All right, so back to Andy, because, mm, how good sis Andy? I wanted to believe that Andy couldn't be bought, y'all. I really, really wanted to believe that. However, I don't know if it's true. The way that she is, like, reminiscing in this episode and, like, grappling with the idea of Gary giving her this stuff and... Oh my God, it's so amazing. No, it's an absolute no for me. And I'm so glad we got the moment where Robin interrupts her little thoughts of like, am I going to call Gary? Am I not going to call Gary? With just like his presence and like checking in. Even though I'm not too sure about Robin, I definitely think that Robin is an upgrade from Gary. So I would take it for right now. But I love that he interrupted this. And then... With, like, he definitely overheard, like, he heard the little dialing, you know, when it's call waiting or whatever. And I wonder if that was Gary calling, because I'm not really clear. I got to go back and rewatch the episode. And then he's like, oh, that was him on the phone. I don't know if I'm actually here for, like, I like that he's still pursuing her knowing about the whole Gary thing. But I don't know if I'm here for this whole back and forth banter about it. Like, I'm going to need Andy to shit or get off the pot. Because, no, girl. Nothing about the police pulling you over was sexy. Nothing about those police pulling you over and singing that dumb song was romantic. <sighs> Nothing about it is. Like, honestly, had Gary, you know, giving you a Rolls Royce with a million dollars worth of stuff in the back and his divorce papers when y'all first met, maybe this would be great. But he's giving this to you after he has had your accounts frozen, your house search, your stuff seized. He's, you know, made you passed out by sque squeezing you to death. He's thrown his wife off of the top of a dang on parking garage. He's like, p did a pop-up wedding on you. He's told you that you ain't nothing and your stuff ain't nothing. All of this ain't nothing. Like, he's doing this after all of this other stuff which adds context and the way that andy is moving right now as if none of that stuff ever even existed or ever happened i'm just like i can't like i really just can't andy's sitting up there practicing to talk to gary exactly hey cheryl d I just watched Jeremy live from Our Kind of Entertainment. I had to watch you both because I love sisters. And also you and Jeremy have great reviews. Yeah, shout out to Jeremy over at Our Kind of Entertainment. He is on top of all things Tyler Perry. Um, I don't think Andy is going to give back that car. That song took the cake for me. She was in too into it. I, <laughs> I hope she wakes up and listens. I It just really confuses me he gave you the car no i don't know i don't know he gives you all these clothes and jewels mm, well i don't know he gives you a fake police officer that pulls you over and yells at you to get out the car and create some kind of traumatic moment and then breaks out a song and like oh that's it that's the key <laughs> what it's the stupidest thing ever. And she is really into it. Like, I could not be Andy's friend. Like, y'all, y'all, if I was on the show and I was Andy's friend, y'all would think I was the worst sister ever. Because I would be like, you're stupid. 
you're absolutely stupid. So everybody who's coming for Karen about what she has to say and hope she thinks that uh, she wants to make everybody miserable, no, because Andy is being dumb. Andy is walking into additional situations of trauma and disrespect. Gary don't respect no damn boundaries. If he really wanted to make amends, if he really wanted to do something different, then his actions would show that, and they don't. His actions still show him to be manipulative, to still be controlling, to still, like, what? Andy, you're a damn lawyer. What are you thinking? How is this cute? And for one, for one, y'all, I'm like, okay, I hate it for her. I hate it for us having to watch it. However, I get the representation part of it because there are women out here like this, right? And this is no disrespect to any woman who was in this particular situation. However, I need Tyler Perry to get to the point where we show what to do next. Because Andy has been living in this purgatory of Gary Hell for three seasons now. And at what point do you stop just showing the representation of a woman trapped in a toxic cycle with this man? And you actually get to the ways that she get out. How's she going to break the cycle, Tyler Perry? We need Andy to break the cycle. We need Andy to release this demon back to the shackles of hell where he came from. Choose herself. Love herself. And move on. Whether that's with Robin, another man, or alone. Whatever, I don't give a damn what the options are. They just not Gary. And for me, Andy ain't having enough actual conflicted thoughts. Honestly. Like... It's one thing for her to be going back and forth with like, oh, should I take Gary back or not? But like, I need you to be weighing all of the circumstances, not just these gifts, not just his little sweet words in the last day and a half, because it's literally only been that. It's literally been maybe three days since he stood in your damn house and told you that you were nothing. Everything that you have is nothing. Sorry, I'm on a rant, y'all. <laughs> I really need Andy to choose herself. Yes, time. And don't forget the therapist incident. I did forget the therapist incident, but even though him throwing Jasmine off the parking garage was her fault because she jumped on his back, it was still wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and leave that with you because I don't know if that was her fault. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm going back and rewatch it anyway, y'all. So, we're going to see. Because there are also people who are um, bringing up that the baby couldn't uh, couldn't be Aaron's because he told us that he was sterile. He told her that he was sterile. And I'm like, damn, did I miss that? I forgot that. Like, what actually is going on? So, I'm going back and I'm rewatching Sisters from the beginning. And I will go back and see if, and like, if I can really recall that... Um, that that was Jasmine's fault because I didn't see it that way. When sis uh, went tumbling off of that parking garage, I was just like, sir, I can't. But Andy is operations as if... Yeah, she's operating as if she has nothing. Girl, you have your own, sis. Women may get here, but they don't stay there. Yes. Um... You're here after watching, Jeremy. I gave you a shout out on Twitter for having Logan on your suspect list. Thank you so much. Did you tag me? I'm going to go on to Twitter and like retweet anybody who tagged me and things. Um, thank you. Shout out to everybody coming here from Jeremy's live. Um, it's Karen's time. Aaron is a good guy. She was waiting on the switch up. And I, he assured her, and hopefully the fans that were waiting too, that he is a good dude. I root for them. Miracles happen every day. All right, so we're going to transition, I guess, off of Andy. And let's go ahead into Karen. Because I think that, that's, that little um, that comment is like a really good one. Welcome, everybody, who is joining now after Jeremy's live. Shout out to Jeremy from Arcana Entertainment. He is crushing it with all of the Tyler Perry comment. comment. Mm. All of the Tyler Perry content. But yes, let's talk about Miss Karen, who y'all already know. If you're not new here, you know that she is a fave, right? Like, 
she she's a fave of mine at least i understand her we connect we see each other i'm totally here for it no gary did not pay for her condo you know he ain't pulled a preston when he moved in preston pulled up like he moved into danny's house and paid her rent up for three or six months gary just moved in and brought more problems aggie so y'all drop what y'all think in the chat about karen this episode how we feeling? What we thinking? We about to talk about sis. I'm, I'm not even going to hold you, y'all. I was so here for her pulling up to that daggone basketball game. I loved it. I loved it. I loved how her and Aaron were looking at each other. Even though I don't know if I'm on board with Aaron, y'all. Like, I don't know. I don't know. 8 out of 10 for her. Welcome, 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 everybody that's new. All right, so while y'all drop y'all's thoughts into the chat about Karen and her part of this episode, I'm going to do a brief overview of it. So after Karen leaves Andy, she calls up uh, Aaron because she wants to talk now. She's ready to talk. And I'm like, okay, this feels good. This feels grounded. Let's go ahead and make it happen, sis. Um, he tells her that he's at the basketball court. She pulls up with him. And y'all, I do think that she was 100% is really reaching out in an attempt to tell him about the pregnancy. I 100% believe that she is keeping her distance because of it, just because of how messy it is and how confusing she has felt. Um, and I love this for her. Like, I love that she took the time and the space. She hasn't told anybody yet except for Zach, who told Fatima, which makes sense. But she hasn't told anybody yet. So, it's just Zach that knows, Fatima that knows, and, of course, Pam knows the ass knows. Um, and her next step was to tell Aaron, which, to me, signifies that she really does care about him. So, she pulls up at the basketball court. I don't know if I'm rooting for them, but I love the way that he was looking at her. I love the way that she was looking at him. It felt like, okay, this feels good. This feels positive. This feels healthy. And I want this for her. Like, ultimately, I want Karen to be happy and to be good. Um, and when she shows up, she's just like, yeah, I don't want to tell you here, which also just lets me believe, like, she wants to talk about the pregnancy. Um, and it makes sense. Like, don't talk about it here. Now, she is confronted with Gary, who runs over and then tries to say, hurry this conversation up because they plan. <sighs> if you don't take your goofy ass on somewhere. Like, this is really not what you want, Gary. You really need to stop confusing all the other sisters with Andy. Because they not. Fatima will fight you. And will get a case put on you. Karen will shoot you. And I wouldn't have a problem with either one of them doing either. Danny would probably fight you. The only other person that might give you the same energy is Sabrina. But nobody ever really confronts Sabrina. Like, you really need to mind your business. You could have just stayed over there. But we have that little moment. Okay, cool. Aaron, I hate that you're actually friends with Gary. I hate that you're still mentoring him or whatever y'all's connection is. You need to cut it. Because if you have snakes in your circle, you have raggedy men in your circle, if you have just trash around you... You become, a, you become a, a dumpster. I'm sorry. You just do. So we're going to need to release him at some point. I hate this for you. He's not a good friend. He's not a good person. You are not going to change his life. The same way that Andy has not changed his life and in being involved in it, you aren't going to change it either. Let it go. Um, but that's not even the, the biggest confrontation. Once Zach runs over to get the ball and he sees Karen, Karen sees him. <laughs> it is awkward. And I want him to be like, Aaron, why didn't you tell her that he was here? You told her that Gary was here, but you didn't tell her that uh, Zach was here? I don't know how I feel about that. And you knew because y'all had been playing. Like, whether he was on the other side or not, you knew. Clearly, y'all was cool enough. To, like, I, of course, he ain't going to kick no flavor or whatever towards Zach, even though y'all tore up her damn house and broke her TV. But 
you ain't going okay you good you're in the ground the place you fine i definitely think that he should have told her that is the moment that karen decided not to say anything when she saw zach and then how Zach responded. And honestly, I'm going to give Zach this whole response because they are still navigating these very, very, very confusing waters of what this is going to look like. But when I tell y'all, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for the day that Zach and Karen are friends and fine and positive with each other. Oh, because I'm so ready. I'm so ready to be out of this whole I hate you energy, whatever. But anyway... From there, they uh, Aaron is like, okay, I want to go ahead and leave with you. Like, let's go talk. And then we don't actually get to see that happen. So we get a time jump to the next morning. Aaron actually stayed over, but they didn't do anything. And she lets him know that she's still processing and she's not ready to talk about it, but she will. And he gives her space to do so. Now, y'all, Tyler Perry is not going to fool me. I am ready. And I don't want this to come across like I'm expecting the worst. But I feel like when characters come out right and say certain things, it's a setup for them to do the other thing. So while he is confirming how much of a great guy he is after Karen says, I'm just waiting for you to flip. When he literally says, I would never flip on you. I'm just like, oh, a flip is coming. And honestly, I anticipate that he's going to find out about the pregnancy. She's going to tell him and he's going to be good. But now with that dialogue that they had and like how OD it kind of felt of like him like, nah, I wouldn't do that. I just wouldn't do that. I just wouldn't do that. I'm just like, nah, Tyler Perry is going to do that. It's about to be some weird funky energy and I hate that for her. But let's go ahead and see what y'all are saying in the chat. Okay. I felt some type of way when Erin was in her face and she was trying to see what Zach was doing. Other than that, she was fine in the episode. <laughs> I don't know if she was trying to see what Zach was doing or if she was just like really confused and seeing him. She didn't anticipate seeing him. I think Karen is finally going to give Erin a chance and I'm here for it. She deserves to be happy. I think that she's about to give him a chance too, which is a little scary, at least for me. Yes, they was given. Um, Tiffany says, I heard a story about a man that got a vasectomy and still got his wife pregnant. So miracles happen. Don't care. Don't count Aaron out. Well, I already don't think that it's Aaron's baby just because Zach and Karen has unprotected sex twice. The, the time in the salon and then there was a time in episode one in the car. So I do think that it's really Zach's baby. But you're right. Miracles happen all the time. <laughs> Danny would cut him. Uh, we have to accept that all men are not cheaters or childish. Aaron is a real winner. We are so quick to look for the negatives when the positives are shining. Save Sister 1965. I agree. I agree that sometimes we can lean to that. However, just being a storyteller myself and knowing certain things in reference to television and film and how you like dialogue is structured and how things happen, um... When creating characters, that's a that's a ploy that a screenwriter would do. Like they will have a character tell you one thing, a character that you are supposed to be able to trust, and then they go and do the thing as the shock factor or as the pivot or as the big thing. They go and do the opposite of it. So that's why I'm kind of saying that. Not because I'm like assuming that men like this who say that they're great aren't actually great. It's just because it just feels like that's what he's setting up as a screenwriter. I can't wait until they're friends either. I like Aaron, but I want to know more about him. That part, like, I feel like we don't know enough about him. And while he has been super mature and grounded and um, definitely a positive force in Karen's life, I don't know where it all comes from. So it feels unsafe for me. Like, like he's not unsafe. I just feel like I don't know enough about him to stand steadily on this ground of like, oh yeah, he's great. Come on, Tyler <laughs> will not have that nice, that nice, nice with Karen and Zach. Yeah. He will flip when he drinks. Hopefully he doesn't drink anymore. Hopefully. I like Aaron, but I'm unsure about him. What's going to happen when she tells him that she's pregnant by Zach? Yeah. We need to see... My sister have a successful relationship. Love, live like love. 
I would really love to see one of them. I mean, I guess we're getting that with Zatima. So we maybe one other one of them. Technically, we do have, you know, it's a team of living out our black love goals and dreams. They had a freaking amazing scene in this episode. Even though I didn't like how it was introduced. Like, I felt like it was a little problematic how they were going into it. And I don't actually want you to surprise me in that way. But we're going to talk about them. Um... I tried to find the episode when Aaron said he had the vasectomy. That's what someone said. I don't recall him saying this. I can't find the episode. Yes, we need to be on the hunt for it because I haven't, I don't remember, but I do remember him saying a bunch. Like I remember him saying that his wife's kids weren't his kids, but I don't remember the rest of the stuff from that episode. So I'm just like, did he say it in that episode? And that was like how he introduced that idea or what? I don't know. I love Fatima and Zach being together. I think Aaron will still love Karen, even if it's not his baby. I think so, too. I was just telling my friend on the phone before I got on live, like, one of the scenarios that I would love to see play out <laughs> between Zach and um, between Zach and Aaron. That could be really, really good. If I was, like, a screenwriter for the show, I would definitely put this in there, and it's so messy. Maybe I'll make a video about it, and then y'all can know. But, okay, so for the most part, y'all are kind of kind of good with where they're at y'all are good with um Aaron and Cam um Aaron and Karen and where they're about to go um I actually have to do my episode 7 synopsis breakdown because episode 7 I think is the episode where she's actually going to yeah I think it's episode 7 tell him about the baby so we're about to have this drag out for a little bit and we also still have to see her go to the doctors. Like, that should be happening in the next two episodes or so. She should be about to go to the doctors to find out how far along she is um, and get more information. As we saw by the end of this episode, she's going to bring the sisters together to tell them. I'm very curious as to how they're going to respond because I know that a lot of people are saying that Karen is not a good friend. But I personally feel like her friends have not been really being a good friend. When she's not drinking, they're shaming her about it and not actually thinking or asking more questions as to, like, why from a genuine place. I feel like I would have been able to guess what was going on with her just by how her behaviors had shifted. But I don't think that her friends have been paying attention to her enough. But they also have their little drama going on. So I guess that was the reason why I was distracting for them. I really just, I don't know. I feel like they, they <laughs> haven't been... They haven't been holding her down. Andy's talking sh behind her back. Danny is resentful, but then also, gr like, low-key grateful, but won't tell her she's grateful about, you know, how she's actually showing up. And Sabrina is, like, lost in the Calvin sauce for no damn reason. And all the while, like, I think that she has been showing signs of this, and they just haven't been checked in friends. But she's about to tell them. It's going to be interesting how they respond. I wonder who is going to tell her to keep it and who is going to tell her to get rid of it. Maybe that needs to be a video too. What do y'all think about that? While y'all let me know that, like, let me know in the chat. Who, who do you think is going to tell her to keep it? Who do you think is going to tell her to get rid of it? Who's going to be happy for her? Who's going to be weird? Let's talk about Zach and Fatima. I'm going to go into that, but y'all let me know. Because I have a little bit of a delay on my end. So y'all let me know what y'all think. And I'll come back to that part. Zach and Fatima. They were definitely given in this episode. I did not like. So in the trailer we saw um, Fatima actually say like if you play with my heart you will lose. And I was like oh damn it. Why is she about to go down this whole extra strong black woman road and like being all anti and weird and confrontational up front. But it was understood like it was clear why she did it like he introduced this like. Why did you have to say, oh, yeah, I went to go play basketball, but then I also, before I went to go do that, I had to go pick up something from this girl, and then I had to do that. Like, I, and, yes, it wound up being he went to go pick this camera up, but I hate that. Like, don't do that to me. Do You know I already have trust issues. You know this is very new for me. I have not allowed myself to fall, and you know what my weak spots are. Don't 
teased me to set up this surprise and make this big thing. Like while I think that this was absolutely beautiful, it was so magnificent and so thoughtful and so sweet. I definitely think that Zach could have ushered in this grand gesture, this romantic amazingness without planting the seed of like, oh yeah, I had to go see another hoe to go do it. Like, no, sir. Sabrina going to be happy. Andy and Danny going to run their mouth. But are they going to be happy for her? <laughs> Do we think that Andy and Danny are going to be happy for Karen? I feel like Danny is going to act weird, tell her to get rid of it. Andy and Sabrina will tell her to keep it, but try to give her a lecture. Okay, I can see that. I can totally see that. Okay, so how did y'all feel about the Zatima scene? That's the only part I really struggle with. I struggle with him taking this moment to like throw her off and to try to ruffle her feathers before bringing her into this beautiful setup of him taking all of these amazing candid shots of her while she was sleeping. If you a guy, take notes because you need to go ahead and do this for your lady. But don't do the part where you talk about some other girl that you had to go pick something up from when you already went to go play a, a basketball game at 10 o'clock at night and you had never done this before and this is giving very, very weird and I have already told you that I have fallen for you and now I'm attached and now I'm going to have to whoop your ass because you're playing with me. Don't do that. I'm just saying. <laughs> How did y'all feel about Zach and Fatima? Because I struggle. I struggle with that part. But oh my gosh. I think that we're getting. Um, I think that we're getting every episode. Little seeds of like what the Zatima show is going to be like. And I'm really excited for it. Like if you take the scene from this episode. The scene from the previous episode. And like if you really go back through this like season 4. And the, all the time that you saw Zach and Fatima together. I think that that's really what the show is going to be. I want them to go on a date already. All they do is stay in the bedroom. Ooh. Ooh. That's some tea. That's some tea. I've been trying to give them grace in that. Like, they, they have a lot of sex. They have a hell of a lot of sex. And I would like to see that too. I think that the photos i think i'm so excited about the photos on the bathroom mirror just because that showed a little bit more thought and effort right than just sexually pleasing her like that showed like intent thought and that he really feels like she's beautiful and these are all the ways that he feels like she's beautiful and it took time and effort i don't like pranks like that i at all at all <laughs> At all. It's giving unnecessary stress. It's giving don't do that to me, sir. Mm -mm. Yes, I definitely had a problem with it. But overall, it was beautiful. We are going to get to see, well, hopefully we'll get to see more. Maybe we not, actually. We're probably only going to get to see Zach and Fatima out and about in the wild, <laughs> like living life when they get to their show i could definitely see that because even with this we only got that one scene with them um in this episode and with them having their own show coming i definitely can see tyler setting us up to really like prepare to get the most of the team and the, the basically more for team more is the team than we've ever seen and them in different setups in that show like on the show they're gonna it's gonna be the team uh fatima's friends zach friends and his brother um they're gonna have a bunch of other things surrounding them and then also just by the nature of the show being about them they're gonna have to be outside of their house like nobody i think part of when sisters drags the most as a show is when we only see all of the scenes with everybody in their house i think one of the things i really loved about this episode is i love the scene of um karen and andy in the garage but then the different parts of the garage right so like andy and karen are talking but then also when um karen is calling aaron and she's walking i'm like okay this gives us a different visual cool when they go to the basketball court that gives us different visuals 
cool. Like I love seeing the different setups and not us standing in one place and talking on the phone or standing in one place or sitting in one place and like talking on the couch or in the bed. So I think that maybe we're probably going to see more of them outside of the bedroom once we actually get to the team of the show. Unfortunately, but we're going to see. Yes. Okay. So what else is there? Did I miss anything? Y'all I think I talked about everything. We talked about Danny and El Fuego. We talked about Karen and Aaron, Andy and Gary, Calvin and Sabrina. Next week, y'all, if you haven't already, I'm going to be putting up, of course, my breakdown video for this episode, but then also the preview video. I'm excited for that. Logan is at the door. He gonna try to talk to Danny. I totally feel this. Like, I feel like he's going to be like, I'll be at the airport tomorrow. You need to know that so that you don't try to tackle me again. And this is what was really going on. Um, which is interesting because also like, how did you find out where she lives? How did you like, well, okay. If you're like FBI or something, that's how you found out where she lives. But you don't think that something's wrong with this. You're trying to force your way into her damn house. I can't. I absolutely can't. Gary, oh, oh, I cannot get off of here without talking about Gary and damn Zach. I almost was about to do that. Zach meets Gary on the basketball court. Zach proceeds to ask Gary what he does. I'm a hedge fund manager and a menace amongst women. But I'm a hedge fund manager. Oh, Zach, I'm going to have some questions. Can I hit you up? Here's my card. Zach actually follows through. <sighs> I hate this for Zach. I really do. Zach, Gary is not it. I wish, I wish we could warn you, but he is literally not it. Even him, like, in his office, the scene with Gary in his office with his little Jake <laughs> sitting there. I'm like, y'all ain't doing no damn work. You don't know what you're doing. Like, I don't believe nothing about Gary at all like he is a walking lie and menace and now he is going to wreak havoc in zach's life gary don't give a damn about anybody he don't have no friends he don't have no woman he he literally like what are you even living for sir like not to say i want anything to happen to him in that way but like people who don't have anything to really live for or a why or any it's just like you're dangerous. And Zach dodges the question when, when Gary asked him, like, how did you know about this Bella Misa stock? He's like, oh, I just guess I was lucky. So I'm glad that he knew enough not to be straightforward and honest with him because he don't know Gary from a can of paint. And Gary S is crazy. And I definitely can see Gary trying to take advantage of Zach. And why I feel like Gary is going to try to take advantage of Zach is going back to what I said about him not having no friends. He don't have no alliances to people. He don't care. Like, he really just don't care. You think they're evolving? Who is evolving? I, I didn't see Gary and Zach. I saw Duvall and Cheeto. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gonna hold you. Cheeto was not acting really well in that scene because he's like, Bella Misa, Bella Misa. Oh, I was tracking that stock. If you were, then why'd you need to fake flip through these damn papers and ponder for a second if you were really tracking that stock you would have no it would have popped up on your head immediately but okay cheeto go off for the most part you'd be giving us crazy menace any other time so your acting is always up you know top tier but in that scene i was just like no but i also probably am just being extra critical because i hate seeing gary on my screen but yes and Duvall was definitely giving Duvall. but honestly i feel like Zach as a character is shifting more to who Deval is. Like now that we're getting out of the F boy phase, I think that we're getting into like more. Tyler is writing Zach's character to be more like who Deval is in real life. So that's why we probably are feeling like we're seeing Deval in the way that we are. I really think Gary and Jake are going to help Zach in the long run. Jake more so than Gary. Help him how? Because y'all know Zach is going to jail. And I think it's coming up probably in episode, I don't know why I'm thinking this, but six or eight. So help him how. And yes, I'm probably biased just because I really do not like Gary and he has a track record of bringing misery and mayhem in his wake. So I don't see anything positive for him interacting with anybody. 
Like the fact that he was in this in Aaron's ministry group and he can't seem to find Jesus or grab a semblance of like common sense and like you don't do this because this is evil. It just says a lot to me. It really does. Zaria, hope I pronounced that correctly. Who do you think is evolving? I'm trying to pin this comment, it's not working. What do y'all think about Gary and Zach at the end of this episode? Do everybody except for me think that Gary is actually going to be a positive value add to, to Zach's life? Did I miss any comments? No. I'm waiting to see what y'all think because y'all know I don't I don't have any hopes or dreams about Gary being positive at all. <laughs> I have been saying the same thing about Zach and Deval from the conversations with Fatima. Yeah, you feel that too? Yeah, he might have started the series off as Zach, but he going we going into the the Deval era. And I'm here for it. Like I absolutely love it. And it also gives a really great place for him to pull from and to give these authentic performances that he's given. Like, even when we go back to, you know, season three, when he's at the hotel after uh, him and Fatima have that little spat and they just have miscommunication. And um, he's like, I'm a millionaire. Woo! And I'm about to have millionaires. Like, he... Those little things, like at the end of this um, episode, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm about to get help. All of that to me feels very true to like how Deval actually would respond to great news and, and great things. And it just, it reads so real on screen. So I think that it's great that his character is aligning a little bit more with who he is as a person. Because then we just get even more believable performances. And that's wonderful. I wouldn't be surprised if um, Tyler Perry gives him license to do a lot of ad libs and just be. Because he has a really good command over... Zach as a character. Maybe Zach and Gary will become good friends. For what? We cannot name one good person or one person that Gary being in their life has made a good impact. That to me is a red flag. Huge red flag. Okay. Well, y'all, we have been on here for about an hour. I'm going to hop off because I have to work on my breakdown videos as well as my preview videos and a few other things. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this live stream after the show. I thank you so much for joining me with all of your comments and your questions and your thoughts and your feedback. Let me know if there is a specific video you think I should make or something I should specifically talk about. Put that in the comment section of this video because I'm going to be making quite a bit in the next few days and I would love to talk about something that you specifically asked me for. I don't know. I'm like you. I don't like Gary. So I try to ignore him. That part. Um, yeah, put in the comment section. Let me know. Again, like this video. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.